The question isn't whether or not you're going to meet your needs. It's how well are you meeting your needs and is it sustainable? I just don't because if your basic human need is certainty and security, and security I think that you're in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode where we had a live mastermind with the one and only Natalie Hodson. Today, for episode number 524, we are going to talk to you about the six basic human needs. So, Tony Robbins has a TED Talk. That is all about the six, the six basic human needs. At the end of the day, Alan's going to be giggling over here. <laughs> Alan has had a bunch of cookies, so this, this, thing could, chips. this thing could go right off the rails. Oh, yeah? So this is something that I've used in my past coaching with clients. Yep. Because the six basic human needs help you understand yourself at a deeper level. So you, so it's the first four are the needs of what? The human. And then the, the last two are the needs of the spirit? Correct. Okay. So the first four are certainty. Variety, love and connection, and significance. Yep. Love and connection are one. Love slash connection. Yep. And then the last two are growth and contribution. Yep. Okay. So what my goal, my intention for this episode, we'll explain them a little bit, mm. but I want you to figure out what are your two most important human needs, because we need all of them. Yep. Right? We find a way to meet all of them, except some people don't have the growth and the contribution. Like some people just don't have that met. Right. That's where fulfillment comes in. That's or at least thing. they're not focused on it consciously. Right. right, and that's kind of our thing. Like growth and contribution are two of our most important. For sure, right? They've become yes, yeah. yes. They they weren't always that way for sure. I want you to sit down. If you're emotionally driven, you're probably gonna. It's probably gonna be certainty and then love and connection and then variety and then variety. Yeah. Certainty because you want certainty of to make sure the you know you're safe, make sure your bills are paid, that sort of thing. If you're an M. What is it? Significance. Significance, Most yeah. likely. Yep. So if you, when you start to understand yourself at a deeper level, you can really use these in your favor. And this is what I used to have my clients do. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to write down your, most, your, your first two. So for many of my clients, it would be certainty and it would be love and connection. Mm. Okay? Th those would be their top two. And I'd say I want you to rate those on a scale of one to ten. If you're like below a six on both, that's why your mood is off. Just, yeah. just know that, and then you can plan accordingly. And it's going to be incredibly difficult. Imagine if, if certainty, and love and connection are your first two, but then, but they're they're not met. What are the chances you're going to go out and try to grow and contribute? Yeah, I I talked to Emilia about this not long ago. We did the Books for Babes initiative, and I said, sweetheart, charitable initiatives are a luxury, and that's proof. If we weren't good at meeting our own financial needs, what are the chances we're going to go and help others? Mm. So growth and contribution in a weird way are kind of like a luxury. And Tony Robbins in his TED Talk, again, go listen to that, is he talks about this. The first four need to be met. And it doesn't mean matter if you have to drink or smoke. Like You'll find a way to meet your needs. The question isn't whether or not you're going to meet your needs. It's how well are you meeting your needs and is it sustainable? Mm. And so if you are really, really good at meeting your needs and success at meeting your own needs, then you're going to be able to focus more on growth and contribution, which will then help you do that. So it's like this interesting thing. You know Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Oh, I know everything. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no, I know everything. Perfect. No, I don't. I don't okay. really. Go on. Um, at the bottom of the pyramid, it's, it's safety and shelter. And so, like, think about it this way, right? If you're homeless, you're not exactly concerned with donating to charity mm. because your needs aren't met. Whereas if you're running a multi-million dollar business, of course it makes sense to consider being more charitable. Right. And that doesn't mean the person who's homeless can't be charitable, but maybe what they, it's going to be harder to. Because when your needs are fully met, that's when, that's when you're able to be more um, giving, more generous, more growth oriented. And, and so when you see someone who's super growth oriented or who's a big contributor beyond themselves, it's actually because they've built such a strong foundation of meeting their other needs first mm. in an so interesting way. So if you're listening, I want you to ask yourself right now, where would I rate these? Okay, certainty, knowing something is the way it is, like knowing that your bills are going to get paid, knowing exactly what to expect, right. right? I used to say this, I used to hate going to new places because I didn't know the parking situation, right? I wasn't certain 
of where I was going to park for some reason that gave me anxiety. I don't, that's a weird thing. <laughs> right? So that's certainty. Variety. Fun, unique experiences. Doing different things. Trying different things. Eating different foods. Going different places. Alan and I are not super variety driven. We do the same things fairly often. And, oh, yeah. you know, we, we enjoy that. Love and connection. Whether that's, you know, calling a friend every night. An intimate relationship. Your family. Like connection. Feeling part of something. Feeling loved. Feeling part of something. Right. Uh, significance. What makes you feel important? What makes you feel valued? Tony, I think Tony's example that really, really brings it home is if I hold a gun up to your head, I am literally the most sig- significant person in, in the life. world to you right now. Oh, yeah. I'm the most important. Now, obviously, that's a dark side, but that does help tie it in. Uh, is that the first? Did I do four? You did four. Yep. And then you have growth, which is you growing towards the best version of yourself, you learning all of that, and then contribution. Contributing to something greater than yourself or helping with charity or, you know, being a mentor to to people. Like, whatever contribution to you means. Think about those. What is your top two? And, like, rate them in this moment. Like, how certain am I about my life? Like, how certain do I feel? How certain do I feel about my relationship? About my job? Like, how certain am I on a scale of one to ten? And then rate your second one if it's... Love and connection. How much do I feel loved and connected throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, throughout the year? Like, how does that actually feel for me? Mm. And then figure this stuff out. Like, it's it was such. I was doing this for. Sorry, I just touched your foot. I was doing this with certainty. When I if I woke up and my certainty was like under a six, I felt terrible. I felt terrible, and I never knew why. And then once I figured, I didn't figure this out. Obviously, I learned it from Tony. But once I (laughs) once I once I once I figured this out, and I did a TED talk on it. Uh, I realized what it was for me, and, and I think getting clear on that is just super beneficial. I think uh, the other thing that's really important for people to understand here is your current top two needs can shift. Mm. And so Kevin, I think, is a really good example of this, and, and me as well. Early in our childhood, I would argue that both of us craved a lot of significance, Uh I think that you got significance from being a badass or from being jacked sports. or or sports, right? Baseball. Yeah. I got a lot of significance from being the smartest. And men tend to crave significance. Uh, they want to be imp- important and valuable. And, you know, women tend to crave love and connection. Um, and the ways in which we go about as men getting significance or women getting love and connection are not always savory. Mm. You know, it's like this interesting thing. But eventually as you mature, I think it starts to shift and you start to realize that it's not fulfilling being the best athlete just for the sake of being significant. It's not fulfilling getting love by having sex with other people or whatever. And so we're all kind of growing up and learning about ourselves. And and what I've noticed with Kevin and I is that prior to my car accident, prior to his suicidal uh, situation, I think we were much more driven by the human needs and a lot less driven by growth and contribution. And now I would argue that we've kind of shifted. Certainty might still be number one for you, but I wonder to myself, I bet you growth is number two. I, or maybe even contribution. I don't know. I I, I know that, and this is the thing too, like being an entrepreneur will strip you of certainty. So it's almost (laughs) one of those things I've had to learn genuinely. And that's why we've had these conversations behind the scenes of like, I don't know that entrepreneurship is for everybody. Right. I just don't because if your basic human need is certainty and security and security, I think that you're in trouble. Yeah. Because especially at the beginning. It definitely at the beginning. Yeah. And I think like Alan said, this is something that you can you can really Rewire. learn. Yeah. And this is the other thing, super important. Make sure you're being honest with yourself. It would be very easy for you to say, like, oh, a variety, I don't care at all. Well, would your past like you went to Fiji, you went here. You won't eat the same thing two days in a row. You, you know what I mean? You're traveling all over the place. If you struggle with consistency, it's most likely you're, you're pretty mm. variety driven. Yeah. People who are variety driven have a really hard time with consistency. And it's so, it's, so it's important. Yeah. It's important. Just like it's important to know your love languages and be honest. Yeah. Like that, that was an interesting thing for me is I talked to somebody and I said, make sure when you're talking to your boyfriend, and I know this is off tangent a little bit, but make sure when you're talking to your boyfriend, you tell him that you won't be mad if he says physical touches is most important. Right. And because, and also, if you're going to do this as a check-in, right? This is a check-in. Tara and I have been jeffing, but things have been so amazing that I think... Same. It's just yeah. been like, it's felt like, look, I don't think we need to do this now. We literally talked about that. She, she said, and this is again a tangent, but 
So just for the listeners that are new, Emilia and myself and Taryn and Kevin used to have these weekly check-ins we would do. Yeah. And Emilia and I recently, we haven't been doing it. And I asked her and I said, I want to be humble. You know, why aren't we doing it? And by the way, we used to do them based on the six human needs. For Emilia and I, we had the seventh one as sex. And we would rate them from zero to 10, do this whole check-in. And, and recently, Emilia said that for 2021, I feel like we we can evolve our system to be less in-depth because our communication is so incredible by itself. Mm-hmm. We don't need what we once needed, you know. Um, and I do think that we've evolved as a relationship, and I think you probably feel that same way, too. Uh, uh, yeah, for sure. It's almost like the check-in was the training ground. Now it's natural. What's the next training ground? Yeah, I think, I think for people who are early, it's a good, it's a proactive. Right. And now I think that we have the ability to reactively communicate where it's like, if something comes up, I'm not going to freak out and be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. I have been like, we've had a lot of talks lately about like, you know, Taryn said, hey, I just, I'd appreciate it if you could help out more around the house. Right. And I was like, okay, I do the dishes. Like naturally my ego, it's like, I do the dishes every night, babe. Like I don't, and then it was like, oh, you know what? I understand. Like, I understand what you're saying. Cool. Let's make the whiteboard up and figure out who's going to do what. Boom. Versus having a, a breakdown or a fight over it. Exactly. You know, I think we, it's, it's just like hands. needing a spotter early in your fitness journey. Yeah. And then eventually you can do that weight, no problem. Yeah. Where were we going before that? I think it's super important for you to, if you're going to do this as a check-in, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. it's important to communicate your truth. I told Taryn very early on, look, when it comes to variety, I just kind of don't care that much. I'm more certainty. Variety for me, I don't need different things. Right. I can eat the same thing every night. I can watch the same thing every night. I can do the same thing. You know, same. I did it. In Florida, we did it. We yeah. did it for 30 days straight. Same thing every night. That's why it worked so and it well. And it was awesome. We it was so the much best, time. yeah. So it was very important for me to communicate that to her and understand that for me, it's a sliding scale. We might do one thing. We would go to right. trivia on Tuesday nights. We did that 10 out of 10. Yeah. Variety for me is yeah. a 10 out of 10. It's, it's met for the week. Where for it's her, met for the month. It, genuinely. Yeah. Right. For her, it might only be a seven. Right. Okay, cool. It's understanding that. It's understanding that. Super also, important. and this is another one, I think it's important to understand that sometimes you're going to have to put your partner's human needs before your own. Mm-hmm. If your partner is super uncertain right. about whatever's going on in his or her life, you're not going to want to drag them to a bunch of variety. That, or, or you, might not get other, you might not get your sex need met. Right. That might not be happening, or you might not get the growth need met or the contribution or the significance like something might shift yeah i think it's important to understand like it's not the end of the world and it's not like it's going to be like that forever it's very important honestly i think it's a great practice to use these in your relationship 100 percent, genuinely uh whenever i think this is an important point too you have your macro and micro human needs so for example if okay kevin and i on monday when we were supposed to be recording this episode we ended up having the Wi-Fi out. Yeah, we're Jeffing. And we needed to get home for the mastermind. We were so uncertain at that beginning of that mastermind that that we certainty became my number one need. And I realized after it, by the way, because mm. we talked to the team after the mastermind, got a bunch of feedback. I could tell that I was clinging to certainty. And I was in the car with Emilia during that call with the team. And when we got to the gym, I was a little bit more certainty driven than normal. I, I was having trouble, like, uh, how do I even explain this? But certainty was more important to me. I was like clinging to certainty. You've seen me at team calls and, yeah. and you're like coming up with all these crazy ideas and I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> what we're doing is working. Let's not stop the train. All that is, is that I had a tough call earlier and I need, I'm clinging on to certainty. Even though certainty is not my number one, it becomes my number one when I'm in a ton of uncertainty. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, the uh, again, analogies. Tony used a lot of analogies. Watch this TED Talk cuz I'm I'm sure number one I know I'm not doing it justice. I'm sure Alan's doing better justice, but Appreciate you. The certainty. If if you and I are standing on a floor and you don't know that the floor is going to hold you. Right. And I'm telling you something. How you're not going to re- be certain to remember that. No, you're not going to even listen. Right? You're going it's it's very hard for you to do anything if you're uncertain about what is happening around you. Right. Super important. Imagine listening to this podcast over a rickety bridge. Rickety. Yeah. You're not you're not listening to us right, right. now if that's the case. Trust Why? Cuz you're not certain you're going to survive. Stay alive. And that goes back to the Maslow's needs. It's like if you don't have safety in your own intimate relationship, you don't have safety in your own home. Can you imagine? You're you're and you're certainty driven. 
you're not going to be able to go grow and contribute. Yeah. And so I think it's important to give yourself grace and, and understand that if you're, if you're not meeting at least your four first basic needs, of course you're not going to be as growth-driven as maybe some of, some of us or whatever. If, we were, if you were driving over a bridge yeah. and it was going down, who would you, would you want to hear your voice last or mine? Um, on, on the podcast? Yeah, like say you were listening to this episode. Like what would you, would you want to hear my voice or your voice last? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I probably. know it's a dark question, but. <laughs> I suppose yours. I don't really? Know. Probably. I'd pick mine too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. I, you know, I. I you I've know, never thought of that before I, in my life. I haven't until this moment, but I. But you know, I think that would make me feel less lonely because. I don't want to hear mine because it, it'd be like, I hear you a lot. You hear me a lot. And I'm sure I would hear you wherever we end up in the post life. I'm sure there's going to be a, a post life podcast. <laughs> obviously. So. Obviously. I feel like All that right. last part was the most valuable. Yeah. 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 I want to add a little, you know. One little, thing for them to get to the next level? Um, honestly, go watch the TED Talk and then sit down. Two, two, I'll give you two things. Watch the TED Talk, figure out your top two, and then find a way to get this into your relationship if you have one because it is unreasonably valuable. Game changer. If you put them in the order of most importance for yourself and then rate them each from zero to 10, I guarantee you that the ratings you give them, if you average them, will be your level of fulfillment. Boom. So fulfillment equals how well you're meeting your needs, especially growth and contribution. Fire. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are interested in getting a podcast started in 2021, reach out to me whether or not... Uh, you maybe you're a podcaster. You want to monetize your show. Alan and I can help you with that. Maybe you want to get better guests. We can help you with that. Audio editing, video editing. We can help you with all that. Maybe you just want a call to get your podcast up and running. We have all sorts of different services, literally a buffet that you can choose from, and we would love to help you turn that vision into a reality in 2021. All right. Have you ever watched a YouTube video versus actually being live at a concert? Mm. Mm. We do live masterminds, as you know, every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can ask questions, but it's, it's also being in a room of like-minded people. There's something about being in that sort of environment that's going it, to it's gonna leak onto you. It's osmosis. It's learning through osmosis. You know, Kevin's girlfriend, Taryn, goes. My girlfriend, Emilia, goes. The whole team is there. You can ask questions. We've got some really incredible... I mean, Matt Zinman was on the last one, Frank Rich, all these people. Get in there and network with like-minded people. If you're scared to be on camera, you don't have to put your camera on. Mm. You can just put your mic muted, camera off, and then type in the chat. Type your Instagram handle in. You, you're going to have to network with like-minded people if you want to get to the next level. Just listening to this show is not enough. You're going to have to take action. Please join us every Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I've been talking to a lot of listeners in my DMs and, and on calls, and one of the things is like community. Especially now with COVID, people are looking for community. They're looking for people like them. They're looking to get out of their comfort zone. They're looking for friends. Right. They're looking not to feel lonely. That's one of the reasons we're doing this. And also, we're going to have PDFs now that go along with this. So if you're on the call, you can actually, or on the Zoom, you can actually download the PDF and go over it with us. Right. It'll make things a lot better, and you'll be able to go a little bit deeper. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy this. Up next, we are going to do an episode for number 525, What You Want versus what you need. My goodness, 525. 525. I told somebody 515 today. I didn't realize I skipped. I guess I lost 10 in time. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, we don't have fans. We have family. We appreciate you more than you know, and we will talk to you on the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye.